Hey y'all, I'm Andrea with The Cutest Little Thing. Thanks so much for joining me to watch this video today. If you enjoy thrift flips, DIYs, home decor, upcycling, and all of the things, then you are at the right place. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I appreciate you being here. And if you visited with me before, welcome back. I appreciate you as well. I appreciate all the support you all show my channel. All right, let's get started with today's projects. I am so excited for this project. We're going to be using milk paint. This is Sweet Pickens Pantry Door. It is a beautiful green color. To use milk paint, you use equal parts of the powder form and water. So I have a tablespoon scooper there that I use in my craft room. I did one scoop of the milk paint and one scoop of water. Here is the piece we're going to be working on, you guys. I thrifted this piece. I was so excited. It is a beautiful piece, and it's going to be even more beautiful when we get done with it. So my initial thought was to remove these little hangers and some of the screws um, were like wrung out and I couldn't get two of the hooks off. So I just went ahead after I cleaned this piece up and I went ahead and put the first coat of milk paint on. And I was going to just paint around those hooks in the beginning and then I decided to just paint right over those hooks and give those hooks that chippy green look as well and letting that bronze color black just kind of shine through there. Here I'm taking my blow dryer and just drying that first coat of paint. I definitely want to use molds on this piece. So these are the IOD Bird Song, I believe is the name of this mold. I think I'm correct. I will have all of that information in the description of this video so you guys can check that out. So I'm coating my molds here with baking soda and that just helps your clay not stick to the mold. Here I'm using my air dry clay. I grabbed this off of Amazon and I just sort of roll my clay in my hands sort of like a worm or a snake shape and I begin pressing and filling my mold with my clay. I saw another crafter, um, Her she is Farm Fresh Designs, and you guys can check her out on YouTube if you don't already. She uses a old credit card or a gift card or something like that to press the clay down into the mold and then to just scrape the excess off the top, and it works really well. So I'm just casting my molds here, and you can see my little girl Allie over there casting her own molds. She wanted to craft today as well, and she is doing a great job. Her mold is from Timu, one we got from Timu, and it has some really cute designs on it as well. So she's doing a great job also. <laughs> And I'm just casting a few different birds here. Um, I weren't exactly sure when I started this process how many birds I wanted to put on the piece and exactly where I wanted the, to put them. So I was just casting several so I would have them ready. And there's her mold. She did an awesome job. Okay, here is where I was just kind of playing around, putting my birds on the mirror here, just kind of seeing how I wanted to get them placed. I got them placed, now I'm using my E6000 glue and I just kind of put some on the back of my mold and I use my finger guys to spread that glue and if you don't wanna use your finger, you could use like a chippy paint brush or a sponge brush or something like that to spread your glue onto the back of your clay. And I just kind of press down. You want to gently press because you don't want to mess up the detail of your clay molds. And then I'm just kind of cleaning up the edges. Some of that glue will try to come out around the sides. And you can just take your finger or a paper towel or something and clean up those edges and the sides there. And you want to gently press around the edges because you want that clay to adhere to your piece all around the edges. You don't want to have a gap there between your mold and your piece and just to help it you know give it a jump start on the adhering process you just want to press down on those molds 
And I, if I get little cracks in my molds, I usually just embrace those cracks. But if you aren't a fan of those, you can wet your mold just a little bit and take your finger and gently rub over that crack. And if it doesn't get rid of it completely, it does help out a lot. And, you know, you can see less of it if you do that. But I normally just embrace them and go with it. Okay, I'm just taking that uh, milk paint here and just painting over those molds. I did let them sit just a little while and dry a little bit where we glued them. But mind you, they are still not completely dry on this piece. So I am brushing over them very gently. The video is sped up. It doesn't look like I'm being very gently, <laughs> very gentle, but I was. And now I'm just I did go ahead and paint over the entire mirror again with a second coat. And this is Rust-Oleum's spray sealer. I just wanted to kind of spray those little hangers and um, help seal that paint where they wouldn't, where the paint wouldn't chip off so much because that is such a smooth, shiny surface. That paint is not going to adhere very well onto there. And I did want it to chip off. That was the point of using milk paint, but I didn't want it to come all the way off. So that's why I did the spray sealer. Now here I'm just coming in after all my paint is dry. I'm coming in with my Dixie Bells white wax. And I'm first I'm just going over the molds, brushing in that wax, getting it all in the detail of those molds. And then I start brushing on the entire piece, just going around everywhere, all over the piece, applying that white wax. You just kind of want to brush it in really well, just sort of polish it in and get it into that paint. Okay, here when I was applying my white wax, um, some of the paint was chipping off. I guess I didn't let it sit long enough and it was still in that chipping process. So I just took a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of helped um, finish chipping that paint. And now I'm going back in with more of my white wax. So I get ahead of myself often. So I really should have done that step before I applied my wax. So if you do this, just make sure you sort of sand over your piece before you apply any wax. And I'm loving how this is looking. I'm loving um, the chipping process. And I'm sorry, my head is all in your vision here. But I love how it's doing the chipping process and the original color of the piece is shining through. I think it complements this pantry door Sweet Pickens milk paint really well. Now I'm going in with Dixie Belle's brown wax. And I'm just doing the same thing I did with the white wax. First, I'm going over our molds. And you will see me blending these two waxes together very often, the Dixie Bells white and brown wax. I just love the look that it gives and how those two waxes blend together. It just really takes it up to the next level, in my opinion. And now I'm wiping away the excess with a dry paper towel. And it's leaving that wax in all those details of those molds. And now I'm just taking my blender brush and just kind of blending around the edges using some dark wax all around those edges just to kind of dirty it up a little bit and make, make the piece look aged because with the chipping detail there, it's definitely, you know, showing signs of aging. So the dark wax will definitely complement that feature as well. And just wiping away the excess with my paper towel there. And I just kind of do continue doing this process until I'm happy with my piece. And I also took that dark wax and everywhere it's chipping and that off-white color is, or cream color is coming through. I wanted to dirty that up just a tad more. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. So I went over all of those areas with my dark wax and wiped away the excess as well. 
Here is our finished piece, you guys. I love how this turned out. I was so tempted to keep this one for myself, but off to my booth it went. Let me know what you think of this one, guys, and thanks for watching. Moving on to our next project, I grabbed this little white crate out of my stash. We are still using this Milk Paint the color Pantry Door, and this is the Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And this crate is like, well, it's wood, but it's like a raw, rough wood, and it was already sort of like whitewashed. Um, so I just cleaned it up and went ahead and went in with my Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. I let the first coat dry and then I went in with a second coat. Now I'm going in with my Dixie Bells white wax and I'm just good in, putting a good coating of that wax all onto this piece. And then I took my Dixie Bells brown wax and I took a smaller brush and just kind of brushed some on where those cracks are in the boards. And then I also went around the top edge and the bottom edge and sort of just on the corners and just brushed on that brown wax just to give it sort of a dirty look. Now we're ready to fill our crate with goodies. So I grabbed a pool noodle and cut it into sections and filled the bottom piece of that crate. I took this burlap mesh and just cut a piece of it to kind of go over and hide the pool noodles, but to also just create a base for what we're going to put in here. Now I'm just adding some Spanish moss. This is a bunny that I had in my stash, and he's a thrifted bunny. And last year I painted him brown like a chocolate brown and just had him in my decor. So I grabbed him and I did a textured technique with him with mineral in the Waverly and pickling salt and just created a salt wash. I painted him up, added the white wax, I let him dry and now I'm, I just added him to the center of my crate there. I want to fill the crate with some eggs so I grabbed some that I had there in my stash. These boxwood picks I get from Walmart and I just kind of cut those up and just stuck around in my crate just feeling it and just playing around with it until I get the look that I want. These beautiful pink roses are also from Walmart and I can't remember, you might have seen it on the tag but I missed it, the price. They were like a dollar thirty cent or something. And this cute little Easter sign is from Dollar Tree. And I believe I got this last year. I decided to kind of add it in the background of our crate. I thought that was really cute. Now, I grabbed this little terracotta pot. And this is the color Hazelnut in the Waverly. And I just brushed on a quick coat of that paint. I like the terracotta pot look, but I wanted it just a little more toned down for this piece. And now this is the color Moss in Waverly as well. And I just kind of dabbed on the bottom of my pot there, sort of like it's been sitting outside and just collecting some dirt and even having some, maybe some algae or something growing on it. And I just dab that around that um, top little piece there sticking out as well. And just kept dabbing that on until I got the look I wanted. I also dabbed on some brown wax, the Dixie Bells brown wax. And just kept blending and wiping away excess with my paper towel. And look how cute that looks. And I went ahead and sealed all that in with my DIY clear wax before I fill my pot. I let that dry. I added a little Spanish moss into it. These mushrooms were in the Valentine section at Hobby Lobby. I have been loving mushrooms lately. They would have been cute pink because it would have matched the pink roses in the crate. But I just wanted these to look a little more natural. So I painted the tops of them with that same Waverly Hazelnut paint. 
I did two coats and then I stippled on that same moss color, that green color in the Waverly. And I just sort of, it was before the hazelnut color dried. So I just kind of blended those two colors together. And once it dried, it looked really cool. It looked like moss or algae or something on those mushrooms. And I just took the back of my paintbrush and dipped in my black chalk paint and just put the little black dots back on those mushrooms. These are so cute. They probably still have them at Hobby Lobby if you wanna go grab some before they're gone for Valentine's coming up soon because you can use these all year long in your crafts. I just hot glued those right in that terracotta pot. I also added some of the reindeer moss and I thought it needed a bird. These little mini birds I get off of Amazon, they are too cute. I usually end up painting them. I'm not too crazy about the colors that they come in. So I'm just painting him in the color Celery in the Waverly. I let him dry and then I hot glued him right there on the edge of that pot. And look how cute that is. That's cute just on its own, like for a tiered tray or something. So I sat my pot there in my crate. I added a little more greenery in there. Got it adjusted like I liked it. Super cute. I thought I was done, but I did end up putting a bow on the bunny's neck. And I highlighted his ears and eyes and some... um cracks on them with some dark wax. Let me know what you think of this. I think it turned out super cute. It is definitely beautiful for springtime and Easter coming up, and I am so ready for spring. What about you guys? Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I love grabbing baskets from the thrift store, but especially these little cute baskets like this one. So this is going to be a quick upcycle. I just grabbed a piece of muslin cloth and I cut it to fit the front of my basket. I had this super cute blue birdie transfer in my stash. So I just applied that transfer to that piece of muslin cloth using my transfer tool. You just rub back and forth while you gently pull up on that clear piece of film while you rub with your transfer tool and you just do it nice and slow because you don't want to pull it up too fast and rip your transfer and then you just sort of rub it make sure it's all adhered really well then i took my clear diy wax with my sponge brush and just rubbed all of that wax on to seal that transfer in now I'm just lining up that piece of muslin cloth and I'm just going to hot glue that piece of cloth onto the front of my basket and just cut off the excess there. Make sure it's nice and even. And hot glue will hold that just fine. Now I'm filling my basket. I had some like drop cloth scraps I put in the very bottom. Then I added the Spanish moss and this eucalyptus greenery I love. I get it off of Amazon and it comes in a garland and you can cut pieces for your crafts and things like that. I wanted to paint this handle and I first went in with Fusion's Blue Pine. I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors, but when I got it all painted and it dried, it weren't quite the color blue I wanted, so I actually grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color Agave. This is another favorite color of mine. I've done many projects using this color. I love this blue color as well. It has a hint of green in it. So I went back over that blue pine color with agave. And I like that much better, how it went with those birds in the front. Now I'm putting my greenery back in. And 
I have these, if you ever see these red berries in the thrift store, pick them up. Because if you don't want to use them red, you can paint them blue and have you some blueberries in your, add them to your greenery or in your arrangements. This is just some craft paint, Admiral Blue, I believe it is. I get it from Walmart and I'm using this little paintbrush here to get those all painted up. And I stuck them in there with my greenery. I decided to add this little piece of foam block to help secure my greenery pieces. And I hot glued them to the foam block. And then I added my little blueberry picks back in as well. Then I stuck that Spanish moss all around to kind of hold them, hug them tightly in place. And that's that, you guys. A super quick, super cute thrift flip upcycle. I love it. Let me know what you think of this. If you hang out with me very long, you will know that I love picking up frames at the thrift store and giving them new life with a paint job or even a new print inside. So with these, as you saw, we're going in with our cottage color DIY paint in the color crockery. This is an all-in-one paint, so it was perfect to use to paint over these smooth, slick, shiny gold frames. I went ahead and did two coats on each frame, and I don't tape them or anything. I don't tape up the glass because if you do get a little paint on the glass, it wipes away very easily or scratches away very easily once you're all done with your project and your paint is dry. These pictures are identical. They both have the magnolia flower and all the colors are the same, but the frames are slightly different, which I like that. Um, they have slightly different detail and texture, so the paint kind of grabs differently and later on in the project we'll be using some waxes and that will grab a little differently as well as you will see. Now that that's dry, we're going to go in with our Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. This is the color Pantry Door. It's a beautiful green color. I love it for spring and Easter coming up. And to use milk paint, you just use equal parts of water and it comes in a powder form. And I just keep a little scooper in my craft room and I'll do a scoop of water and a scoop of milk paint. You want to mix it really well and let it sit just a few minutes to thicken up a little bit. I always use my blow dryer to dry it. But if you have a heat tool or anything like that to apply heat... Um, you can do that as well. But the heat, it helps the milk paint, the process of it chipping and doing all the wonderful things that it does. The heat just helps it along. And this is, I'm just putting that milk paint on that other frame. Coating it really well, and I do end up doing two coats of the milk paint on both frames as well, drying the first coat completely before moving on to the second. Now I'm going in with my Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in the color white. I'm just brushing all around, getting that wax all in the details of that frame. I want that frame to hold on to all of that wax and we'll let it sit just a few minutes and then we'll wipe away the excess with a dry paper towel. And I do the exact process to the other frame and this is where you will see how those two different frames grab a hold of that wax a little bit differently, but I still love how they look together and they pair well together. And I think this green color pairs so well with the gold and cream tones in this picture. 
I did decide to go ahead and go with my Dixie Bells Brown Wax as well. Y'all know I love combining these two waxes together. I love the look that it gives. And I did want to give it just a little bit more of an antique look. And it would go, there are some brown tones in this picture when you get up close. So it just sort of blends it a little bit better and helps the entire piece come together well. And I do the same thing to the second frame also. Now we're just wiping away that excess with a dry paper towel, or you can use a piece of drop cloth or any kind of cloth you keep in your craft room to get rid of that excess and to sort of polish it and blend it all in. And that's that, you guys. Super quick, super easy. I love how these turned out. I love the color combinations. Look how pretty they look together and hanging on the wall. Let me know what you think, and when you're in that thrift store, don't leave those beautiful prints behind. Grab them, give them a makeover, and new life. Thanks for watching today's projects, you guys. I hope you enjoyed each one. I appreciate you hanging out with me, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, let's see those finished products one more time. We have our chippy green mirror we did using the bird molds and our milk paint in the color Pantry Door. Our sweet little bunny crate we did using that same milk paint, perfect for Easter coming our way. Our beautiful little mini bird hanger basket where we painted our blueberries and used the muslin cloth. And last but not least, our frames that we used that same milk paint on. Thanks so much for watching The Cutest Little Thing. Please like, subscribe, and share around. Thank you so much for your support of my channel and helping me grow. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you on the next one.